Hey everybody, it's Dick here. Today I'm riding the 2019 Triumph Street Scrambler. It's a 900cc parallel twin running 65 horses at 7,500 RPM with a max torque of 59 foot-pounds of torque at 3,200 RPM. It's fuel-injected, liquid-cooled, chain-driven. It's got a brushed 2-2 two two twin high exhaust, which I think sounds lovely. Inexplicably, it's a five-speed transmission. ABS comes as standard. It has three riding modes, road, rain, and off-road. Spoked wheels, 19 at the front, 17 inch at the back. It's got a Brembo two-piston floating caliper front brake and a Nissan two-piston floating caliper rear brake. ABS comes as standard. Seat height is 32.2 inches with a 3.2 gallon tank capacity. I've always been a bit smitten with the look of this bike. This is the first time I've gotten to ride a street scrambler. So let's get it out of the road and see if it lives up to my expectations. Hey everybody, it's Dick here. Today I'm on the all new Triumph Street Scrambler 2019 version. There's a couple of changes from the even the 2018 version, including upgraded brakes and a couple of other tweaks. So it's not all new, I suppose, but it's an upgraded or updated version of the Street Scrambler. I think they had to do that because of the launch of the new 1200 Scramblers. And I would think this has always been a popular model for Triumph and you couldn't just eliminate it from the line. You had to upgrade it a little, update it a little, but still offer it because it is, it's a, it's a street scrambler. That's why they designated it that way. It's, it's street oriented and then you can go out into the farms or on a little gravel path to light green landing on it. It's not an off-road bike, but I, there are people who take these off-road. I can see taking this off-road. This is actually more nimble than I expected it to be. It's a comfortable geometry. These are really wide handlebars, it seems to me. I do like this BMX thing here. This is quite fun. The dash is a little weird because it's angled away, and it's just enough to get the sun in my eyes and catch the sunlight so I don't think it's adjustable to bring it up if it was up just a dash it would be a little better I've always been drawn to these style of bikes because of the high pipes but I'm finding this really annoying on my right leg I always feel like there's something there that shouldn't be there but that's the exhaust when I first got on it I thought that the engine was kind of lackluster coming out of first kind of just rolling on the throttle it felt a little sad but really I think you got to give it some juice when you do, it comes alive. The torque band lives, I don't know what it is on paper, I don't read before I ride. As most of you know if you've watched my videos. But it feels like the torque band is right around 5500, 5000 RPM. It's so nice up there. So it encourages you to give it some go. It's really snappy up there. This snap that, uh, that you see now doesn't happen in the low RPM. That's where I like it. I like it coming off the line. Very different experience to the 1200 HT engine that I've ridden. This is a 900 HT high torque engine. There's three rider modes on this. You got road, rain, and then off-road. So they do encourage you or expect people to be a bit more daring on these things. I'm on the road mode now. It's a beautiful day. I wasn't expecting to go for a ride today, but I couldn't say no. Yeah, that that right calf on that high pipe is not pleasant. It feels weird. Seat height is good. Sorry, we're going again. I'll talk about seat height at the next light. I feel like I want to hug the tank closer, but that exhaust keeps getting in my way. So I'm not really, not really happy with that exhaust as much as I like how it looks. I do love how a high exhaust looks, but it is really bothersome up there. It can rev and it really wants to rev. It doesn't come off of speed very quickly. Like there's that torque there and you would think that there would be a little engine braking there and it's not as drastic as I'm used to or as drastic as I prefer. You kind of come out of warp a little bit. You kind of slowly descend from speed, which I guess is more comfortable and more forgiving, but I do like that interaction and that quick response when I roll off of the throttle. This thing is cool. I just decided to go that way at, la at the last minute because I read the signs for once and it just, you can, this thing turns on a dime. Yeah, don't, don't be, uh, don't 
be subtle with this. Give it the goods. This engine wants to be run. It's a little weird vibration when you get to the top. Wow, whoa, lots of vibration there. I guess that's that's when it tells you to when it's tell, telling you to shift. The whole bike protests. My feet were wobbling, my feet were vibrating, my hands were vibrating, my ass was vibrating right at the top of the rev range. It was like, please shift me or I'll explode. I'm in sixth gear, going about 70 miles an hour. Sounds like I'm up around 8,000 RPM, which seems to be a little high for sixth gear in my estimation, but I'm not getting that protesting vibration that I got at the top end of the other gears. 60 miles an hour, the wind is really quite manageable. Anything above that, you're getting this kind of lifting feeling. I know, it's a scrambler, it's naked. Shut the f up. Let's see what these, yeah. Brakes are nice. I didn't engage the ABS. This is a couple of aftermarket bobs on it. This BMX bar, there's some aftermarket adjustable levers, which I don't think are all that nice. I don't know what else. There was something else. Oh, there's a beak on the front of this and a headlight grill. Stay in your lane. Let's see if I can get, wow, yeah. This thing just moves where you want it. You think about it. M3 inching off on me. Yeah, that's vibey. It tells you when to shift when it starts vibrating like a sex toy. This thing gets up to speed really fast and really smoothly. So out on the highway, it feels taller than it feels in the city or in the back road. 70 miles an hour, 68 miles an hour. Wind isn't bad at all. It's actually quite comfortable. We'll go up the motorway for a little bit. <laughs> See a little wobble there. These wide handlebars give it a lot of very, very twitchy fifth gear. Why am I in fifth gear? Why is there only five gears? Gear indicator says I'm in fifth gear. I feel like I should go up. No, it's only five gears? How could it only be five gears? Well, it seems it's only five gears unless I can't get it into fifth, into sixth. I thought I was in sixth gear. I thought I was in top gear. Yeah, that's it. It's at fifth gear. Sorry, everybody. Anyway, I was saying, these wide handlebars, see that wobble? Very little input necessary into these handlebars to get this bike to do one thing or the other. Push on the, you can steer this bike with the foot pegs. This is a lot more comfortable on the highway than I anticipated it would be. It has that juice. I mean, I'm still in fifth gear. I'm riding about 70, 65, 70 miles an hour. But if I wanted to, if I needed that little bit to pass, look at that. A Wind kicks up just above 75, but it's not an issue. I'm just getting lifting on my helmet. I'm not getting anything around my chest or shoulders. You got that juice at the high end of the RPM. I'm really enjoying that. Very tame at the low RPM. But once you kind of get to that, middle band on your rev counter. Not that you have a rev counter. That's where this bike comes alive. It's a more spirited version than the Royal Enfield Interceptor. I was a bit bored with the low down tameness of the Royal Enfield Interceptor. And I was surprised to find that the torque was up near the mid and high range of the RPM. And I can see that they spent a lot of time looking at Triumph then, because now that I'm riding this, it's, this is a better version of that experience. There is, a, there is a bit of speed wobble, a bit of turbulence and speed wobble, especially with that squirrely front end there. You gotta kinda take your weight, take your hands, take the pressure off of the handlebars and let the bike track itself. It tracks very nicely. It's very well balanced but it needs very little input from the handlebars. Single disc Brembo on the front. That's one of my big hangups. For the price, for the price point of a Triumph, I really feel like a dual disc brake on the front, some adjustable shocks. These indicators, 
annoy the shit out of me. These little bouncy stock bin indicators. Triumph has been chasing the premium brand mark for a good decade now, and I think they're very close if they haven't already achieved that, to be part and parcel or used in the same sentence or consideration of a Harley Davidson or a BMW or maybe a Ducati. Triumph has worked really hard and spent a lot of money at honing that premium mark, but they're let down by little niggles like that. These little indicators, this kind of, this doesn't look as nice as the one on the bobber. I do love that snap of power up there. I was talking to the salesman about the different rider modes and what exactly off-road mode does and I went to shift up again. Huh, I'm at top gear. I kind of feel like it needs a sixth gear. If it does have the sixth gear, I apologize. I just can't get into it. But it feels like just there it needed a sixth gear. A little let down by the fact that it doesn't. What kind of bike these days doesn't have a sixth gear? Especially a bike that's what, eight to 10 grand? Anyway, I was talking about what the rider modes are, and the rider modes on this are traction control adjustments, which is kind of old school compared to where rider modes have evolved to. The early rider modes on BMWs were, were traction control adjustments, and now there's traction control adjustments and rider modes. I mean, Yamaha offers them on their bikes. I'd be hard pressed to think that their bikes go higher than 10 or 11 grand. So it's just an, the off-road is an adjustment on traction control. And I don't think on this scrambler you can disable the ABS. I'd never disable the ABS and I know some professional off-road trainers, adventure bike trainers, who tell their students never to disable the ABS because we're not going to be better than our computers. But for those people who insist on turning off the ABS, I can't see how you do it on this. There's not like a, a designated switch. Though I say that, and someone was telling me a story about how all the settings were turned off on this, so I'll have to check on that for you. It is comfortable around 60, between 60 and 70 miles an hour, and I don't feel like I'm in a particular rush to get anywhere on this thing. But if you are pushing to 70 and 80, it is a dash uncomfortable up at that speed. I mean, the engine feels like it's working a little hard. You can probably hear it, I don't know, but it's, it's more of the turbulence around the helmet. Yeah, I'm at 70 miles an hour and I'm, I feel like I'm gonna have to duck down a little bit. I don't know where I'm going. So, I mean, I've been on the highway for a good clip now, so it's not terribly uncomfortable. That's 80. My head's definitely being lift, my helmet's being lifted off my chin a little bit at 80. Yeah, the wind, not terrible. It's fine. Maybe with a more streamlined helmet and me leaning forward, it'll be all right. No, nope, five gears. That's weird. It's really stable getting all this turbulence from these trucks. I'm not. I don't feel like I'm being knocked side to side on them. Hammersham. That's where I want to go. There's some nice roads up there if I can find them. It's got a nice sound, even uh, even out here on the highway with all this wind noise and all these other vehicles around me. I'm getting a nice grumble. It's the best way I can describe it. It's very grumbly. I mean, there's two trucks knocking all this wind around. You can probably see me wobbling a little bit, but not uncomfortably so. And if I want to get away from them, which I do, just pin it a little bit. 85 miles an hour, I'm getting that really crappy buzzing everywhere. Bzz. Handlebars, feet, ass. It's a full body massage. So it does not like that high revving. It almost revs a bit like a single up there. Yeah, coming off the uh, throttle feels a bit, it's almost like it's sighing for relief as opposed to disengaging. It's just kind of bzz, bzz. The thing about Triumphs too is that they're kind of like a bit of jewelry, but it's like jewelry that's been worn a lot. Like, I don't feel like Triumphs weather well. When they're dirty, they look a bit cheap. When they're clean, they look like sparkling fine jewelry. It's the, it's the crown jewels. But unless you got the staff to polish it, it's gonna look a bit tired and tarnished. And I always had an issue with that. I see a, I see a Triumph and I'm thinking, oh, there's a Triumph. And then I get close and look at it and it's not really as handsome as I like. Seat height is nice. I have one leg up over here and my foot is flat with a really big bend. If I put both feet down, 
No, I can't do that right now. Hold on. Other than not having that sixth gear, I really like the gearing of this. It seems to be the right gear for the right type of riding, the right mode of riding. Going a little fast. Now that I'm off the highway, my butt hurts a little bit. You know, your head's on a swivel when you're out with that much traffic, and when you're off that, when you're off a road like that, you kind of start taking stock. It's like it's like being in a fist fight. You don't feel a lot of the punches until afterwards. So if I'm flat-footed, if I put both feet down, I'm flat-footed, a little bit in that bend, but you can see I'm hitting that guard there. You're kind of encouraged, even though it's not a tall bike, to keep that one foot up on the peg. That guard is a heat shield. I'd be surprised if it doesn't get hot. Yeah, it dips nicely in these curves. Look at that. Oh. That was nice. I'm really liking the balance of this bike and the geometry of this bike. It is mellow, but maybe that's a good thing. It's mellowness. And on these little back roads, it's really nice. I've read about issue with electrical problems on these street Bonnevilles, but if they could sort the reliability, I could get behind owning one of these. I'm really enjoying, I can see why they sell a lot of these because the geometry and the riding position is really nice. And on these little side roads, it feels a bit sluggish, but it feels appropriate. Nice little burble coming off that speed there. What's this? A little gravel. No vehicles beyond this point. A little more speed. I can see where they call it a scrambler. They've made the ride height really good for standing. The handlebars are the perfect height. The pegs are good. You could really weight the pegs. Horse is coming. I'm gonna pull over, cut the engine. Yeah. I was saying that at the lower, the lower RPM, it was, it felt a little wimpy. But if you snap it right, you could get up to those RPMs quite nicely. Just keep it in the lower gear a little longer than you're used to, and you can find that little spirit. And on these little twisty roads, you can kind of give it some, find some life to it. I, I do like riding this bike on these roads. Yeah, it feels at home here. I didn't think it would because of that initial feeling at the lights or coming off the lights, but I'm really liking having to shift my weight, come back and forth. It's really easy to take your weight off. There we go. Just engaged the ABS and that, that wasn't bad. This bike seems very manageable, very playful. It's a playful bike. It's a couple of niggles, but, and I don't know if the niggles are something I'd overlook for the price point, but if it was affordable, if you can afford it, and you're not looking for a bargain, this wouldn't be a bad bike to have. I, I can see now why they sell a lot of these. I do like that whoop, 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 whoop off the exhaust. And really, I didn't think even though it's a British brand, I didn't think it would be right on the British roads, but it's feeling really at home here on the British roads. Suspension's a dash stiff, but I kind of appreciate that because I'm, lo I'm loving how it's performing.
Even with the wide handlebars, it feels really good when you feel kind of claustrophobic or crowded. I find myself moving my feet along these pegs quite a lot, and I'm running the... I like that I'm running the gears a little more actively. I'm going up and down the gears a little more actively than I have been on other more modern bikes. You know, these more modern bikes, you can clunk it into a gear and really ride the throttle, and there is something to be said about that, but I do like that I'm interacting with this bike. It's I'm making friends with it, and it's open to the friendship. I think this Triumph makes it very easy to get something cool. I can understand why it's popular. It's because it's out of the box cool. It made, it's made motorcycle ownership easy if you want something that's nostalgic, performs to a certain respect, but is also user friendly. It's a good niche it's made for itself. It's funny, I'm, I'm finding myself back on the highway again. You know what it is. It's a it's click and collect motorcycle culture. That's what it is. There's very little work that needs to be done after putting your money on the barrel head. Triumph is kind of I think, you know, Triumph is now the Apple. It's the Apple computers of motorcycling. I do wish I had a 6 gear though. This bike kind of makes me feel like I'm one of those bad guys in an action movie. You know, your hero pulls out onto the road in his sports car and of all of a sudden appears four or five guys on black, no-named, scrambler-style motorcycles, and they're going, bwing, 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 bwing. you know, think of a Mission Impossible movie, there's always, or a Jason Bourne movie. You're not the hero on this bike. <laughs> you're the bad guy, and inevitably, someone's gonna open their door, and you're gonna go over, you're gonna go over the handlebars. But those bad guys know how to ride, that's why they were hired. A little buzzy, my fingertips, my palms, 75 miles an hour. I don't know why there's not a six gear on this. I was cleaning the chain on the Royal Enfield, and a guy came over and was admiring the bike. And it was this typical, what year is that conversation, and he was shocked to hear it was 2016. He had a little disappointment in his face when he heard it was a 2016, as most people do, but he said, I ride a Triumph Street Twin. I feel kind of girly. I said, oh, my wife loves Triumphs. And he's like, yeah, I know. All the girls love Triumphs. <laughs> he's like, I think I might sell mine. I don't know why. I don't know why the Triumph has the kind of girly reputation. I always chalked it up to it being because they're so pretty. They're like bits of jewelry. But now I'm thinking maybe the ease of use, maybe they are very easy to use. I do like that growl. It's got a growl when you roll on that throttle right at the right point. You know, if you hear it. This is almost as satisfying as the R9T. It feels a step down in terms of quality and performance. But if the price reflects that, I rode the R9T Urban GS for an extended ride. And I'm kind of glad I rode that before this. I really enjoyed that ride. I was really having a lot of fun on it. And the problem I had at speed on the highway was it really did blow you back. It really did kind of put your eyeballs at the back of your skull. And at the same speeds on this, I'm not getting as much wind turbulence. So it's, although it's gruntier and the low down torque is better on the R9T, this is better on the highway. It's funny, this thing lives at 65. That's its natural state of being in fifth gear. It'll ha it has all that. I mean, it'll go. It has all that extra stuff. But once you get over that sweet spot of 65, you're working it, making you work. But it does. It lives at 65 on the highway here. It's very comfortable at 65. But I wonder if I need a 900 twin to be able to go 65. <laughs> If you like that video and you want to see more like them, hit like, share, and subscribe.